Hey Stock Abilities, I'm going to be covering Robinhood being fined for $1.25 million by FINRA after broker violations. Of course, this is pretty much seen coming into 2019-2020. They've been in the news quite a lot and not in the positive light of things. Now, you've probably heard that, you know, negative news is good news and so on and so forth, but the Robinhood IPO is supposed to be coming out here maybe potentially into 2020, 2021, and is the company still going to be around in that time? I'm going to be covering that here in this video, so make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment below your own input on Robinhood and what you think of the broker violations and other things like the infinite money's glitch and just the silly things like that. And uh, as you can see here, Robinhood was a fine financial was fined 1.25 million for what the financial industry regulatory authority said were execution violations tied to customer equity quarters and related supervisory failures and they uh, essentially settled the matter without admitting or denying wrongdoing they probably just don't want it out of the press of course that's not going to happen because they keep having these problems over and over again and these are some of the problems that have been going on since like 2016. And as part of the settlement, the provider of the commission free trading, including fractional shares, agreed to the appointment of an independent consultant to review the firm's execution systems and procedures. So they have a FINRA guy here associating with them. And they were trying to release new features like the Robinhood fractional shares and things like that. But they're already having some problems as it is. And it's kind of funny to me at least, but uh, it, they're essentially admitting to no wrongdoing or anything, but yet they settled for paying the fee, which is a, a funny, just hilarious to me. And then you got the FINRA rule 5000 or 5310 requires firms to use reasonable diligence to uh, ascertain the best market for a buy or sell order to ensure the best possible price to the customer under the prevailing market conditions. Uh, and they didn't reasonably consider that execution quality rule. And then as Robinhood did not reasonably consider the rule 15310 execution quality factors, such as price improvement, the firm could obtain from alternative markets FINRA said in a statement. In addition, Robinhood's supervisory system was not reasonably designed to achieve compliance with its best execution obligations. Essentially, they're a for-profit company, of course. They do commission-free trading, so they're trying to find loopholes around that. Of course, you can't loophole around FINRA and, uh, uh, regulations, broker violations, and things like that. Uh, you know, SEC, FINRA, or no joke, you shouldn't be toying with them like uh, Robin Hood kind of is in a sense. Uh, it's, a, in my opinion, a hipster commission-free trading. You should be using something like TD Ameritrade for share trading and everything. If you're doing little small scalps here and there or you're on a more limited budget, I would not recommend it for long-term trading. It's getting to be rather of a joke. And um, the agreement relates to a historic issue during 2016-2017 timeframe. Obviously, the 2018-19 drama is going to catch up with it in the 2020-2021, so I don't feel this is the first Robin Hood lawsuit that's going to come out of this, uh, and I could see some in the 2020-2021-22. I would not be surprised if in five years Robin Hood is no longer around and someone overtakes them, with, especially with all these other brokers uh, releasing commission-free trading and things like that. Uh, as you can see here, the agreement relates to historic issue during the 2016-17 time frame involving consideration of alternative markets for order routing, internal written procedures, and the need for additional review of certain order types. Over the last two years, we have significantly improved our execution monitoring tools and processes relating to best execution, and we have established relationships with additional market makers. Obviously, to some degree, that's true, but at the same time, they're still having a lot of technical difficulties. I mean, even as recently as the last few months and the last year, they're in the press and the media almost every other month for something going on, something fishy. Whether it was the infinite money's glitch, which I'll be covering here. So make sure to subscribe to that channel if you haven't left it yet and comment below and check out some of the other videos. I talk about Robin Hood a little bit here. And Robin Hood, based in uh, Menlo Park, California, is backed by a number of major venture capital firms. So there's a lot of uh, 
kind of bouncing around there. They're trying to keep their investors happy and things like that. It's uh, been overseen. But the Securities and Exchange Commission regulates brokerage firms that do business with the public in the U.S., if you're not familiar. And what I was talking about with the Robinhood Infinite Money's glitch, I don't know if I really covered it here, but essentially it gave a kind of an edge in free money they kind of exploited box spreads and things like that for options. And so they can just continually leverage over and over again without really putting much money into it for the risk. Obviously, that can be an issue, both from a FedRAS perspective and an SEC perspective. And they might get some, uh, Robin Hood might get some fraud charges put against them for that alone. And that that alone might bury their company just from what happened this year. But that's going to take a while for then the process that, as you can see from the previous 2016, 2017, they're only really getting around to dealing with that into 2019 from almost a three-year span in between. So you're looking at 2021, 2022, where there's going to be a lot of pressure on Robinhood. Uh, I'm not sure if Robinhood will IPO by then, but that is something to consider if you were considering investing in their IPO. They're supposedly going to do that. I haven't heard much about it in the recent months, whether they're still going to do that or not. I don't know if things like WeWork scared them away, where WeWork was having a lot of trouble pre-IPO and kept delaying theirs as well. So we'll see what happens. And uh, as Robin Hood says, they're aware of the isolated situations and communicating directly with customers. I wouldn't consider that isolated, considering almost anyone could have did that. And then uh, places like Wall Street Bets put this on blast for basically everybody to take advantage of. Uh, obviously, you run into cases of fraud and stuff utilizing this method, but people will still do it. Obviously, that's not going to stop anybody. And then they, they're they touting the free from commission fees and customers and supercharged investing would pay $5 a month to trade them that. That's also a little bit fishy on the end. Because a lot of other brokers don't really necessarily charge for, you know, getting a margin on their account. So you're paying them monthly fees to take out a loan anyways. So it just seems kind of convoluted in itself. But uh, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about that, here's how the trade works. Users of Robinhood Gold are signed covered calls using money borrowed from Robinhood. Nothing wrong with that. The problem arises when Robinhood incorrectly adds the value of those calls to the user's own capital. So at a certain point, there's a they're kind of amplifying the actual valuation of the account just temporarily to deal with that. So their options trading, Robinhood, Robinhood options trading setup was a little wonky, and that created some questionable extra funds and capital that the actual investor didn't really put into the broker account. As he said here, one trader managed to, as Bloomberg said here, one trader managed to turn $2,000 deposit into $50,000 worth of purchasing power. Obviously, that's a liability a lot on the investors end of the ones backing Robinhood in itself. And then it's a problem with the SEC and FINRA because they're taking out monies that aren't technically theirs. And then there's fraud cases both on the customer end, consumer end, and investors as well as Robinhood's. And there's a lot of sorting out back and forth that's going to have to go on. And then there's going to be probably some big court case, and I honestly don't see Robin Hood being around very much longer with all the problems that they're having. There's better brokers out there. I personally use Weeble if you want to check that out in the description below. And then uh, you got the traders using what they call the infinite uh, leverage to supercharge their wages, could be held liable for the money and guilty of securities frauds, according to Donald Langford, a law professor at Georgetown University. That gets back to what I was basically saying, that... Uh, in the 2020, 2021, not only is the person that was exploiting it potentially liable, but Robin Hood is as well for allowing that to happen even in the first place. There's an element of deceit that you got this by exploiting a loophole in the system. I can see how that could become a securities fraud case. And then the other possibility is just the basic common law of restitution. If you take advantage of someone's mistake to line your own pockets, you need to pay them back. So obviously... Uh, You'll see how that unfolds in the next year or two. I think you're going to hear about it more in the 2020, what's going to go on with that. Last thing I wanted to mention in this video is that um, 
You can try calling Robinhood, but I've had a lot of problems trying to get a hold of them on the phone. When they initially started, they were great. Just the quality just seems to keep going down and down and lower and lower, which is why I switched to alternatives like Webull to try to find a better broker that's a little bit more stable for options trading, a little bit more stable for long-term share trading, fractional shares. I use uh, M1 Finance, but it's a lot better than Robinhood, and there isn't any major news going on with them that's they're not really causing any glitches or what seems like exploitations at this point for robin hood um on top of that i've tried emailing them before and i've had weeks or months without a response sometimes i get a response in a day or two but it's a generic auto response that isn't really helpful in a sense to cover any issues that i had so ultimately i at least me personally i don't know how much longer I keep the Robinhood broker. I'm maybe going to get it shut down in the next year, but I'm going to see how they progress. Maybe they'll fix some of these problems. Maybe it'll be worth getting back into. I personally don't think so. I know that as a, a someone that does long-term and swing trading that I would never get back into Robinhood for any of that. But for the occasional maybe short swing trades for a few days, something like that, or a day trade, uh, just as extra trades that I can use for, in regards to the PDT rule and stuff like that, I might consider using again. But honestly, uh, Robinhood as a whole is, to me, not looking so great. Uh, feel free to share in the comments below what your input is. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like, and have a great day.